welcome to my acrylic channel. I'm Karen Rice. I'm going to be painting a, an acrylic painting, especially for beginners, to get them started in acrylics. It's a really pretty sort of scene of the sea, some rocks and some clover with grasses. And I, I take you through really simple stages, working from dark to light, taking you through sort of really breaking down the drawing, keeping it simple and just building up with um, the details at the end with lights and details, starting off with large shapes at the beginning and little tiny details at the end with some spattering as well, just for a bit of fun. I really hope you're gonna enjoy this tutorial. And if you have any comments about it, please put them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you and get your feedback and maybe even some suggestions about what future videos you'd like to see on my acrylic channel. So shall we get started? Here is the gorgeous reference photograph I will be using and a full list of the materials that I'll be using and the colours can be found in the description below. So I'm starting off just putting some blobs of paint onto this acrylic paper. For those of you that want to know more about my materials, I'll put a link in the description below about the materials I use and the sort of the basic techniques. What I'm doing now is I'm using a large flat brush and I'm just covering the entire sheet of paper with this pink paint and it's kind of like an underpainting and it sort of sets the tone for everything. It's a really good way of loosening up as well and takes the fear out of this white paper or if you were using a canvas or anything like that, I'd recommend it. So I've blow dried this pink background so it's dry and I'm just sketching in now, if you look at the um, reference photograph, I'm just sketching in the really basic outline of this landscape stroke seascape. I'm using Naples yellow and I'm just sort of using a small brush, painting this wet on dry, just really basic shapes. Don't go into it too in too much detail. The detail can come later. What I do when I'm painting, whether I'm painting in acrylics or watercolour, is I work large to small. So I'm just painting the biggest shapes first. <laughs> So I've squeezed out some white, black and Prussian blue and I'm mixing a little bit of the white, the black and the Prussian blue sort of in various quantities and I'm going to paint this onto the C area. Acry with acrylic painting you work dark to light so I'm putting on the darkest value tones first of all and that's with the black with the Prussian blue and then gradually I'll add a tiny bit of white to that just to lighten the colour up, but I will actually put some lighter marks on later, wet on dry, so I'm sort of blending this in. Acrylics dry quite quickly. You can buy a retarder for them, or you can add a tiny little bit of water, and that dilution of the water will kind of keep the paint wetter for longer. And what I do is, well, I make my own um, homemade st um, stay wet palette because they do dry so quickly, even when you've squeezed them out. So I've got a sort of plastic box. I put some paper towel and wet it and then put some grease proof or parchment paper on top. And it's a process called osmosis, that sort of damp paper towel keeps your acrylics from drying out so it's really really great so I would recommend that and it's a really you know cheap way of doing it instead of going out and buying a stay wet palette so as you can see there I'm adding a little bit of white I'm still blending and the paint is now dry and what I'm doing now is I'm mixing up some burnt umber you could use burnt sienna and some black and I'm just painting this brown sort of over this pink background. Now I'm not using the most expensive acrylics, the artist acrylics will be quite opaque and you won't see that pink coming through. But I was just gonna, you know, just use my student acrylics and just sort of paint on this sort of brown, burnt umber colour, wet on dry with my one inch flat brush. What I would recommend at this stage, because these are really basic shapes, is try to be quite expressive with your brush marks. Really kind of loosen up, 
you know, almost paint from the shoulder to the elbow. Really enjoy it. See up there, I'm really sort of, you know, sort of getting my wrist to move around. I'm just really having fun with it. What I've done there is I've added a little bit, a tiny touch of Naples yellow to the black, just to kind of create a lighter, slightly lighter colour. Still quite dark, but sort of a, a sort of slightly lighter tone because the light of my light that I've got above is shining on the acrylics. Um, it's look it's looking a bit lighter than what it actually is. So you're just sort of putting a sort of, sort of a lighter tone on there with the black, with the brown, with a touch of white even or the Naples yellow. If you don't have Naples yellow, you could use something like yellow ochre or raw sienna. But um, yeah, I'm just blocking in these rocks. So I've just squeezed out some sap green. You can use any sort of mid-tone green. And I've got a little bit of, still a bit of lighter color on my brush and I'm just blocking in this mid-tone in all the sort of grass area on this um, cliff top here. Don't worry about the clover, don't worry about that. Acrylics are an opaque medium. We're gonna paint that on top afterwards. We'll take care of that detail later. So you can see already, I'm just blocking in the, the sea, the rocks and the grasses. So you've kind of got three sort of different colors and already that pink paint is starting to disappear. Even if you've got little bits of background pink coming through, don't worry, it creates a little bit of color harmony. And also because the clover is a pinky sort of shade, it looks kind of nice. So I put a lighter green in there, it's like a limey green, but you could just add some yellow to your sap green or your mid green. I'm using sort of like a size six, or just a quite a small round brush, and I'm just putting these grasses in. My background is dry. As you saw there, the top left hand side, I've left a bit of pink there, because I'm gonna put some clover there, so I thought I'd leave a little bit of pink showing. So um, I'm squeezing a little bit more now of a sort of a limey yellow colour, but a little bit of cadmium yellow or lemon yellow will be absolutely fine. And I'm just painting these lighter grasses now, sort of um, the paint underneath is still wet so I can blend it through. I'm now using a bit of raw sienna and I'm sort of painting some of the clover, keeping it very loose. You've got this sort of yellow sort of bits on the clover as well. So I'm just painting that now, little daubs, little marks. It's all sort of different brush marks. Try to vary it and that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just sort of putting little blobs here and there, little dots, little marks. painting dry use a blow dry or something like that I'm using some magenta you could use permanent rose or crimson any sort of cold red pink color and I'm just sort of you know putting some quite free little circles on onto the painting really quite sort of roughly putting them in if you look at the photograph just sort of put them in just sort of I mean it's quite nice on the right hand side they're quite spaced out whereas on the left hand side they're a little bit more closer together but you know apart from that just have fun with it just little circles here and there just keep it really loose this is why it's so suitable for beginners because I'm showing you how you can build up dark to light large to small you know waiting for your layers to dry and just kind of build you know now we're going into these smaller shapes and just have fun with it so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to start adding a little bit of lighter color there you can use a lighter pink or you could add a little bit of white to your pink 
but you don't want to go too light too soon so I'm sort of putting a light to mid-tone pink on there because I'm going to wait for the lightest lights at the end so save those whites till later I always say to my students try not to use any white if you can because what happens sometimes we go in too light too soon and our paintings can look flat so trust me just go for those light to mid tones and paint those in I'm using a flat brush you could use a round brush you could even use your fingertip to paint this so whatever you feel comfortable have fun with it just keep it rough keep it loose don't worry about that detail at this stage it will come later I was putting some definite marks in there just using the tip of my brush just to show a few petals just a little bit so now I've got some white mixed up very hardly any white on my brush it's almost like a dry brush I don't want to put it on too thick I want to sort of scrub it on I'm just using white if you're worried about just using the white you could put a tiny touch of blue but it's just for a bit of surf on the water a little bit of white there and just putting it in between here as well as the as it coming out it's mostly around the rocks the edges of the rocks there just to bring that to life you don't want to put the too much white and light on the background where I'm painting here because it'll come forward too much and flatten the picture I want to create the illusion of space and so I want to give it less attention there and give the flowers and the foreground rocks and grasses a lot more attention so it comes forward and it creates that sort of 3d look on a 2d surface but I'm putting a little bit more white up the top there there, getting it more on the tip of my brush I did wait for my background to dry so everything's wet on dry here and I'm just sort of putting it in there and don't you know as I'm doing here just blend with your fingers as well don't be afraid to do that um, you know get in there and just have some fun with it and I'm also I'm taking my time I'm thinking about things so always be very conscious and present in the moment with your painting. Don't just paint for the sake of it. Just, you know, really think about what you're doing. So I'm putting in a little bit of a salmony pink color here, a warm pink. So I've added a little bit of yellow to my um, pink and white color. So I wanna put a little bit of warmth there as I'm painting away here, just to create a little bit of variety of color as well. And it looks quite nice. So the clover are the stars of the show and I'm giving my stars lots of attention and lots of detail. So I've added a little bit of white to that and I'm just working on the lights above the clover. It's more a little bit darker sort of underneath the petals. So lots of light on top because the sunshine is hitting that on the light in the sky. So you want to sort of create that effect. This is really kind of relaxing. You can really take your time with this. And the good thing about acrylics is if you know if someone rings on the doorbell or something like that you can just stop and you can just you know carry on where you left off when you come back to it so just you know have fun with it you know so it's a little bit of art therapy as well but already now I feel like my painting is coming to life and at this stage of the painting is when I get really excited I think oh yes I can see it's working now um, so what I would suggest as well with don't give every flower the same amount of attention so you might want to pick out sort of maybe three or four on the right hand side and the same on the left that have got a little bit more attention if they're all the same they tend to look a little bit flat as well so you know you want to bring some forward a little bit by giving a little bit more light and a little bit more details and the, all these little tips hopefully will help you in other paintings that you might 
you know do an acrylic so inspire you to paint your own from your own photographs or you know from life itself you know so I'm just scrubbing a little bit of white my brush has hardly got any white paint on it and I'm just using the tooth of the paper or the surface of the paint there just to scrub this white paint on just to kind of look like little highlights and the surf on top of the water there on top of the sea I'm using my brush now and just putting a little bit more light now on the top of this clover here and sort of showing some individual petals here and there and remember enjoy painting them have fun enjoyed painting these pretty little clover flowers here. I've just um, squeezed out some really sort of light lemon yellow colour and I'm just painting now with a liner brush or you could use a rigger brush just a very or a small brush small round brush and just putting in some lighter stems and leaves here and there. Remember in acrylics we work dark to light so I'm just putting on these lighter colours and I've just made up a limey green as well so I've just sort of put some light to mid tones on there. I'm just creating a little bit of variety. Sometimes it's quite tricky to make to paint thin lines in acrylics and what I advise my students to do is just put a little tiny bit of water um, in your acrylic paint just to kind of let it glide off your brush a little it's a little bit easier so I hope that's um, been it's helpful advice I'm just putting a little bit of limey light greens in between the clover flower there just flicking a few leaves here and there having fun with it really getting towards the end of the painting now I've decided actually I'm going to put a little bit more white into the sort of where the the surface going up against the rock just to give it a little bit more sparkle here and there painting this wet on dry I've mixed up a little bit of yellow ochre here as well and I want to put a little bit of light on the top of the rocks where I can see it in the photograph it's a bit lighter and I'm blending with my finger there just to push it back a little bit and just so it's got a little tiny bit of light and details there I think it works quite well and it balance it's quite a nice balance and I'm just getting my brush now just to soften that back a bit to really blend it into the dark so it's not too contrasting it's quite a nice little technique there and what I'm doing to finish off which I absolutely love doing I love doing it in watercolor I've watered down my acrylic slightly the pink and I'm just spattering some sort of um, the pink shade over the clover to give texture, lights and details just to finish off. It's a technique I like to do because it stops me from fiddling and overworking my paintings as well. I thought I'd show you this really nice technique. Sometimes you get these little wooden pegs on the back of canvas paintings and they're called keys and they help stretch the canvas. However, if you don't have those, you could actually use some plastic cards cut up whatever you can get but I'm just printing with it to create sort of thin small stems it's really useful especially if you're struggling to to paint these light thin sort of stems with a brush and it just gives a little bit more texture adds a little bit more detail and light and I like this I like to do this just to finish off 
and here it is finished. I've removed the framing tape to reveal a lovely white border. It gives me some, sometimes a time to assess to see if I need to do any work, but I think I'll leave it there for now. I'm really pleased with it. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I try to keep it simple, but also creative. I always think about acrylic painting or any sort of painting, like when you're looking through one of those uh, camera lenses that you can adjust the focus. So you can start out being quite out of focus. You can be quite an abstract painter, or you can sort of bring it a little bit into focus and be more of an impressionistic, an impressionistic painter, or you could really bring it into focus and be quite a realistic painter. This style of painting that I've shown you today gets you on the road to this and I hope builds your confidence. And here is the finished painting here and I'm really pleased that I've got this nice white border edge as well and it just helps me to make decisions whether I need to make any changes but I left it. It looks quite detailed but I've tried to keep the technique simple so you know where you're going, you know you're building dark to light, large to small and then ending up with detail and maybe a little spatter. Please drop me a line in the comments section below if you have any questions about this tutorial. And if you like this tutorial, why not subscribe to my YouTube acrylic channel and you will get updates of my latest videos. Thank you again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.